The educational situation in Honduras right now is quite poor. In a lot of the smaller rural towns, they don't have enough schools, which is why we're going to go build one. In Honduras, more than 40% of the population is illiterate. Their public system is very uh, poor quality education because they're understaffed. There's lack of schools. I'm so excited to be able to give my experience, my talent, to helping them be able to learn. And I feel that education is something that everyone should have a right to. When we go to Honduras and do something like this, and you build up a school, you know that it's really going to be treasured in that community. Um, like, education is precious. Hi, my name is Alana Paskis. I'm 17 years old and a grade 12 student. Over March break, I'll be traveling to Honduras to participate in a building expedition. Hi, my name is Lauren Lichty. I'm 17, I'm in grade 12, and I'm on my way to Honduras to build a school. I am Camila Silva. I'm 13 and in grade 8. I hope to learn a lot from my trip of building a school in Honduras. I hope to meet other kids there in Honduras and learn a lot about their lives. I'm uh, Marty Machushik. I'm 18 years old, and right now I'm a student. My name is Ross Hybrex and I'm 19 years old, finished high school and getting ready for the next stage. Marty and I heard about this trip to Honduras through friends at church. About 10 teenagers and some adults are going together to Honduras for two weeks. It's all through an organization called World Accord. They've been organizing expeditions like this for well over a decade. We're going to be learning about the Honduran people and their struggle to get their kids educated. We'll also be building them a school in only 10 days. It will be hard work, and I will probably have to work harder than I've done before. I'm not sure that I'm up to it, but I'm going to give it a try. This is the story of what happened to us and to me. Well, here it is, mid-March, and we are busy building a school. I didn't have a clue how we would go about doing this, but the organizers have done this before. Day by day, we carry out the plan. I can't believe I'm helping to build a school in one week. There are 15 of us working on this site. Some of us have more skill than others. But we're all helping out wherever we can. We've become a team. We have learned some Spanish, and we have made friends with Hondurans we are working with. For sure, this is a life-changing experience. All of us will look back and say we are glad we did this. But that doesn't mean the decision to come here was easy. There was so much to learn, so little time to prepare. I'm writing this letter because of an upcoming adventure I'm about to take. This year we will be working in one small community building a school. 
Part of this trip involves fundraising in advance to purchase materials such as cement blocks, mortar, and other construction supplies. I am attempting to raise $3,000 to support this project and will be donating my time and talents to make this Traveling to a place like Honduras will, will really help these students become better global citizens. They have a really keen interest in making a difference in the world by physically going there and seeing firsthand um, how passionate the people of Honduras are and how great their culture is, it's going to make them better people in school, better people in their, in the, for the rest of their lives. They'll, it'll change them, they'll come back different people. The experience is going to be one of a lifetime for the entire team that's going, but even more so I think for Camilla because she's going as a student and gets to meet children that now actually get to become students because of us. So we're looking forward to raising even more money than we already have. Camilla is going to be our representative when she comes back and she's going to be sharing all her great experiences and pictures to the entire school. So without further ado, I think we should start bidding. $60, $65. The government in Honduras has a, has a mandate that they'll supply a, a teacher for a community only if a school is present. So by us helping build and helping finance the construction of a school, uh, that will ensure that a teacher will be able to be placed in that community. The building expedition in Honduras is going to take place in a rural, remote part of Honduras where there's a community that doesn't have a school as, as of yet. I always like to see students and, and the, the younger people's reactions when we travel to a place like that too because it's usually so different from what they're used to. So we're going to take these young people into something that's a fairly spartan place to live and they're going to work on a project. So what are they going to learn? What are they going to see? And some of them will strictly see that they are part of an aid process. They're giving something to someone. They're gonna tell their story about, I went down, I built a school for those poor people who wouldn't have one. And that may be all they can or will absorb. We're gonna to try to help them see more than that. This will be a total change for them. And I think they'll be able to embrace it well and do a great job, but it's going to be very different. Life is a lot different in rural Honduras than it is in downtown Kitchener. Have a seat, guys. All right. I think it's really important that we know a few common phrases in Spanish before we get to Honduras, and it's going to help us um, understand and communicate a little bit more effectively. Please is por favor. Por, por favor. Thank you is gracias. Gracias. Good morning is buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> Good afternoon. Buenos tardes. We have prepared as much as we can, learned our first few words of Spanish. Teachers, parents, and churches, they have all supported us. We have studied the websites, looked at the maps, learned from people who have gone with World Accord to Honduras before. Okay, so if you, if you do see a dog uh, when you're in Honduras, there's a very good chance that it is used for work. It could be a very hungry dog, and it's a very different cultural aspect compared to here in Canada. I did go on a build expedition just one year ago now. So I'm very happy to be here and share my experience with you guys. Just at the base of this lake is where it's called La Buena Fe, and that's that little community where you're gonna be staying and um, where PRR, which means Project for Rural Reconstruction, that's World Accords partner within Honduras, and that's where they're basically headquartered. Our families have been with us all the way even when they had their doubts. I just know that if were I in the same situation, I'd just be so afraid to be so, so far from home. It's certainly a different, uh, totally different culture it's going to be exposed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, different food and different climate and yeah. lots of hard work. I know that you're very sensitive and, and soft-hearted and I guess that's one thing I'm worried about, how you're going to handle that. And you trust everybody. I mean, I know you kind of come with that trusting sort of feeling, but, you know, it's a different world out there. Okay. So, um, you know, that's something that you have to take a look at. And you never know that, um, you know, the, the jails and everything here are more like, um, you know, you, you're innocent until proven guilty. I'll try, there, there, I'll the try and, and stay out of the jails. <laughs> yeah, well, so. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, as our travel date approaches, so does the realization that we're about to leave behind everything we've ever known. For some, this part of the challenge may be too much. My Spanish isn't good. Um, I, to, to be quite honest, don't know anything. Things that I'm most nervous about are things I'm also most excited about. Um, just being in a, in a brand new part of the world. The thing that I'm nervous about going to Honduras is seeing all the poverty and having it be more than I have expected it to be. This is my first time out of the country and my first time doing anything like this. And um, I really don't know what I'm doing. Day, and it's hot and hard work and I'm tired and hot. I, I was expecting the hard work but yeah, the heat's just insane <laughs> and uh, yeah robbing me of all my energy so I'm feeling very tired right now. I was expecting very hard work, and it's very hard. Good morning, everyone. Uh, students in particular from Canada. Welcome to La Buena Fe. We want to welcome you to this area and to uh, let you know a little bit about what PR does in the communities that you're going to be visiting and where you're going to be working. Uh, you form an intricate part of our program. Uh, program is, uh, PRR is our host in Honduras. PRR stands for a Program of Rural Reconstruction. They're a longtime partner with World Accord, and like their name suggests, they're focused on rural poverty. They believe that local participation is the key to turning things around for the people. Building a school is just a very minute part of what PRR does. We hope that they see the broader picture of what a program like this does in the community, improving their homes, improving their health, improving the water system, improving the, the organization, and the education. I want you to be careful with the sun. Uh, we, we're just entering our summer season here you know, and don't let Al overwork you. <laughs> uh. the groups of Canadians have come to Honduras in this area, and we have built uh, 10 primary schools and kinders, what we refer to as kindergarten in Canada. And uh, so over the past uh, year, we have built six kinders. At the present time, we have three under construction. There's a reason that we do kinders, and, and the, it's a gender issue. You see, in the villages, it's the girls that get pulled out of school to care for the younger siblings. And the parents have to go to the mountains to plant when they have to make their living. If the younger children are in kindergarten, the girls get to go to school longer. If there's going to be equity, it's going to come from having the opportunity to attend school for the girls. And that's, that's critical. Antes la de nosotros era allá, pues lo sentíamos, tenemos dos años, ¿verdad? For two years we waited for the help. Then PRR told us they were going to come to build a school and that all of the community was to help out. 
the community was happy and ready to help when they arrived. Are you good? Bueno? Everyone wants to have this, this building made. Uh, even the, the little children, there were little five or six year olds running around with, you know, helping us uh, carry blocks and, uh, you know, move things around and, and uh, they were, you know, always there. You know, if you show them how to do something uh, and they just go out, you know, they just look for tools and grab anything they can and start doing it, um, you know, as fast as they possibly can. It's really impressive. The community had to do several things to be ready for the school. The community provided the, the piece of property and they prepared the site, they, they, they procured the site, they prepared the site with footings and, and got ready for the construction. In reality, that school was going to be built anyway. But it, this project, is, it, it accelerates that process quite a bit. I want uh, each one of these students to go home to Canada feeling that they have been part of building a school. But what I really want them to do is to experience that kind of community life that we have in these villages down here. Things have moved a very long way. When the youth are down there on this trip, they'll, they'll take some time off from the school building, and they're going to go into the mountains, and they're going to see what life is like. They're going to see it in villages that have been working in the program for many years. They're going to see life for villages that have only been working with the program for a year or two. And they're going to go to villages where there's nothing happening. So when the youth go in, they're going to see the poverty. And when they visit the Copan ruins, they're going to see what once was. Copan ruins are very elaborate ruins, developed by the Maya people who are, we consider our ancestors. Copan is one of the most finest cities in America. The, the sculpture is so fine, so well made, that are the ones we have in Copan. This culture was dispersed in all Central America and Mexico, but they had different languages, united by the same religious tradition. Where we are now, over 10,000 people could be here, sitting. These were bleachers, okay? mm -hmm. kind of stadium. So every plaza has its own specific gods and ceremonies. They worship many gods. For every phenomenon, the Mayas had a different god. Rain god, wind god, sun god, monkey god, serpent god. <laughs> Animals in every sense related to gods. And in the calendar, it amazed me how advanced the Mayan culture was and all the different temples and stuff were really interesting and I got to learn lots. The Mayans and you know, now the Hondurans are a very, very old civilization, a very instilled people in this land because they've been here so long. The area is, is just as much a part of them as they are a part of the land. To tell you completely honestly, I didn't know anything about this country before I came here. It's really interesting. It's, it's uh, similar to learning about the uh, First Nations uh, history in Canada, and it was definitely something that uh, everyone should go see. One thing I know for sure now, the people here need this school. I can't help but think about how much we take for granted in our regular lives. We have the best schools in the world, and we have never had to lift a finger to build them. They're just there for us, and we can take it or leave it. But 
here in Honduras, education is precious. This little school, which will be about the size of our classrooms back home, is precious. We're going to go and uh, take my pickup truck, and you'll ride in the back of my pickup truck. We're going to go and visit a school that we built last fall, the, the October and November group built. The young people, they're going to see uh, poverty also they've never seen before. They will see children that run in barefoot, they see children that the dirty hands, dirty faces. They will see homes that made out of mud, they will see homes made out of stick. And they will realize that what kind of life they live up there and compare it to what life the people live down here in this uh, country. We're going to go to Tontola where we built our first school here in Honduras. And we're going to take Dania Rodriguez with us. She was one of the original students in the school. She now has a year to go and she'll be in university. We built our first school 10 years ago in the village of Tontola. While we were carrying cement blocks for building the school, all the Canadians were carrying one block at a time. And Daniel's carrying one block up on her shoulder and she's got the other block in her hand. And uh, all of a sudden, everybody's carrying two cement blocks. But uh, this little girl started to go to school in our first school. And Daniel's now got another year to go and she's going into university. And you can't even drive into her village, you have to walk in. When we start bringing university graduates out of these villages, then I'd say we have accomplished what we came here for. It was very interesting getting to meet Dania. She's the success story of this whole organization. You know, you never know. When we're here helping out build this school, um, how many of the kids may end up growing up to be doctors or lawyers or whatever because of the education that they got through the school? It's just mind-boggling to, uh, to, to think about it.